everybody. Welcome back. Yes, welcome back. So last session, we worked a lot, not a bit, on refactoring the creating shopping cart and printing the shopping cart for a specific customer. Uh, we created some data structures uh, with the help of classes to group the information about the shopping cart into a single place. And uh, we are working on printing the shopping cart and I think we completed writing the function, but we have not called it yet because <coughs> the number eight print customer purchases list should print all of the shopping carts that, that are dedicated to a specific customer. So this function print customer purchases list will be called when the user enters eight and then it will ask for the customer. And at this point we should, we, for example, uh, Shopping cart, I think this was shopping cart. Yes, shopping carts. We, let's assume that uh, we have a lot of shopping carts inside this list and they are uh, dedicated to multiple customers that have been come to the shop on this day, for example. And now the manager wants to print all of the shopping carts that is about a, a specific customer. So we have that customer name here and we should find a way to filter the cards that are dedicated to this customer. Exactly, okay. Uh, so for filtering, uh, we can write a simple for, for each loop. For example, we say cards for cart in shopping carts, for cart in shopping carts, yes? Mm -hmm. If cart dot customer name equals this customer name here. So we iterate the all of the shopping carts one by one. And if their customer name equals to the entered one, we pass that cart to print shopping cart. Yes? You remember this function? Yes, yes, yes. You wrote this function. So, so whatever shopping cart you pass to it, this function, no matter what, mm -hmm. uh, it will, this function will print the content of that shopping cart. So it, it is not printing. Uh, it is not, one, huh? No, no, it, it, it is printed all of them. No, no, just, just, just a single. It just prints the content of a single shopping cart. And this single shopping cart will be passed to this function. You know, it is not counting on some kind of global variable at the top. There is no global it is not using any global variable as you can see all it is using is this shopping cart so this is some kind of a generic function not dependent on any outer scope variable or value of some kind so so we can use we can call it multiple times and we can pass it pass our cart to it and this will this, this function will work actually uh, let's test it we didn't test it in the last, last session, session yes. yes. Let's test this. Put it into test. So it says, huh? Let's, let's create a product. For example, Apple and thousand. Then let's create a customer to for example, me, myself. Then let's have, mm, let's create shopping cart. Enter the customer name. I say myself. Then please enter item product name, Apple. Two. Yes, again, Apple. Five, for example. No. That when we say no, it doesn't, it does not print anything. Mm -hmm. It does not print anything because printing is, is done in number eight, through number eight. So I want to again create a shopping cart for this customer. Apple, nine, no. 
Now, if I say number eight, print customer purchasing list. Who's the customer? Who's the customer? I say MS OD. And as you can see, it is printing the receipt. The first receipt had two items. Mm -hmm. And Apple, I think one unit of Apple is defined to be 1,000. Mm -hmm. So seven units of Apple is 7,000 total price. And the second receipt, we had only a single item with nine apples, so it is 9,000. Yes. Nine. Seven. No, no, no. This is, this is the price. This is one oh. receipt. This is, this, is some, this is the second receipt we have, the second shopping cart. And in the second shopping cart, we had just only a single item with nine uh -huh. apples. So for massive. So a single item with nine apples would result to 9,000, total price of 9,000. <coughs> so the application is working correctly. We are now able to create product, create customer, create shopping cart for a specific customer, print product list, let me print product list number six, so print the product list, and, and it is loading the old, as you remember, the old- in the file. Yes, the old products that has been, has been persisted in the file. Uh, and we have two apples, one, one here, mm -hmm. which we've defined today, and, and this is the last one that we defined the day we were working on the files. Yes, I think that was for uh, yes. this session as well. And if I say number seven, it will print the list of customers. We have only one customer. Master. And uh, printing the customer purchases list, we tested it before. Uh, so <coughs> we have not persisted other things. We should we should also persist. If we, if we be able to persist these four values, variables, and then load them at the beginning of the application, our application will be stateful. It won't lose it, its state when the application exists. Mm -hmm. So for now, we are storing the product list. And these are the two functions, I think, store to persi persistence that only stores the products. Yes? Yes. And then we restore data from persistence. So, what to do at this point? Persist them or let's persist. The name of customers. The name of the customers, yes. The name of the customers. But finally, we can merge the apples, huh? we merge the products. Products. <coughs> yeah, so there are two different types of products in mm. different times. No, then. It, it doesn't merge them. We, we, should not, we should not let, at the first place, let the user create a, a product with repetitive name mm -hmm. at the first place. Mm -hmm. And there, that would be here. That would be in creating. Where, where is the function create single product? Yeah, here, here, here. here uh, we should not add any. We should mm -hmm. just just first we should check if the product if we have already a product with the same name with a repetitive name, and we should warn the user that the product that you just entered, we had it already. So <coughs> this way we can prevent user from entering repetitive products. And when we store them to the persistence, they will all be they will all be different. So, <coughs> uh, so far we have just only used these classes as data structures, and uh, we have not used their object aspect. You know, we have not used them as objects. They they don't have their own functions for now. And at some point, we we will need to write some specific functions, functions. for each of classes. So for now we have two options, I think two or three options. One of our options is to persist, persist the information about customers, shopping carts, mm -hmm. and about the other things, and then restore them and make the whole application stateful. And one other thing that I, I like to I would like to work and show you is working with functions. So Functions in Kotlin is a first class citizen. You know, we have functions at the author scope, at the global scope. And we don't see any classes. We, the functions, we can write our whole fun application in function, in just functions, without even seeing classes as data structures. You know, these just helped us to make the application more concise helped us to compact and bundle the information about a single entity and subject. Uh, and we could do 
the same logic without having these you know with the function yeah, that that would be a, a little bit harder but but it would be able to necessary yeah yeah that is not necessary so but so so this, these functions i think these for example in filtering in here in for each this is the for each yes uh, when when we want to filter uh, these these for loops and do while loops just bother us you know they are they are they are not that pretty they are ugly let me let me just show one of the do while loops at top and you know, just look at this just look at this mm -hmm. it is very ugly or 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 another one I, I remember we had a do while yes here do while or these are very ugly and we can do better than that we can write functions for for example filtering we can write functions for filtering uh, a list. We can write functions for iteration, you know, without needing these for loops. In, in, in functional languages, the functional programming languages, you can use functions as loops, as, mm -hmm. as, you know, as anything. And, and it's, very, it's very nice and we'll see that. Function is different, so we have written function before fun and store phrases. Then. Yes. Functions are, are themselves are, are, are a type that we can store them. For example, let me let me just show you some examples here. Let me comment these lines in the main. For example, uh, each function has some characteristics. For example, this function mm -hmm. has got a name, it has got a signature, the parameters list, yes, and I, and, and a body. And and sometimes it shows the, the type. It yes, yes, of course. The type that it returns, let me show another one that it returns something. Yes, we have here. Mm. <clears throat> get price of product has a name, mm, has a list of arguments, arguments that it takes a single string mm -hmm. and has a return type of integer. And also it has a body. It has a body. So uh, we can, for example, store let me store this. We can pass, unlo unlike the Java, mm -hmm. I think you've heard of Lambda expressions. And dependent. Yes, yeah. Lambda expressions are now in, inside every programming language. They are putting mm -hmm. it in every programming language. Mm -hmm. Lam Lambda expressions are, uh, are about uh, making the functions a block of code as the first class citizen to be touchable, tangible, to be, make us able to pass them around make us able to store them and call them later. Uh, so lambda, so this, this function has a body like any other function, has a return type, it has a list of arguments, yes? We can store it, for example, like this. We can have uh, a function, for example, a function equals these two columns, and for example, print, let me, let me, have this one print product list set. For example, print print products list. Yes. So this 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 is inferred. Let me just you know, for the moment. This 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 function I have stored into a VAP. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can call it later. I can say, for example, a function, or my function, my function with the parentheses. Calling a function is with parentheses, as mm -hmm. you know. So I've changed the name. I've not changed the name here. I've stored it into some variable. And so this function has a has empty argument list, yes? So I don't need to pass. Right. So, so, so I'm referring to this function with this name. Nothing is changed. I'm just calling the body of this function and I'm passing it nothing. So let me, let me I think if we restore if you restore the data from persistence, we will have some products to print, yes? Yes. The print product is will print, will print something. It will print something. As you can see, it is actually calling that, that function print product list at top here. Uh, we, so also we can write functions on the fly without the font keyboard. We can write a block of code without fun keyboard. Without fun keyboard inside our inside other functions and then pass them around. 
We do that with these braces. Here we are actually writing a function. This is a lambda. This is a lambda expression you heard about before. This lambda is a function with an empty argument list that re returns nothing. This unit means nothing in Kotlin. It is returning nothing. We can use it wherever we want. Yes. For example, if I say, for example, 12, it is now returning 12, yes? Mm -hmm. If I, for example, ask for, uh, for example, let's say this is a function of multiplying two numbers. Mm -hmm. Number one of type int and number two, again, of type int with this. Now, this function takes, a parameter. takes two integers mm -hmm. and returns a, an integer, yes? Exactly. So I can return you can do whatever like with number, number one multiplied by number mm -hmm. two. And now if I now that this is complaining that my function needs, needs two, two numbers. Two numbers. If I say for example three and six and I print three, six, six. ln the returning value. That is eighteen. As you expect, it is 18. So let me do a, do another you one. Can you use it out of this school? Yes, so we can. We can pass it to other functions. So, for example, we have fun um, multiply some numbers. Yes, the multiplier, for example, is a function. When I say function, I should uh, define the type of function. Defining a function means the uh, its argument list. And it's return type. That is the argument list. No, no. This is the argument list of this function. This function will receive a function. Mm -hmm. It will receive another function. I think I believe it is called the first order functions. They say passing functions to other functions. I'm, I will be passing a, a function that takes, that takes two integers and returns an integer. And I'm able to do that. This is, this is a type. This, is, this, this, whole, this whole thing here is a type, for example, integer, or for example, double. Or it's not related to that one. Huh? No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just defining the signature. It, it is mm -hmm. called the signature. Each, each function has a signature. Its signature is consists of the argument list and its return type. So each function, no matter what the name is, the name does not matter. It has an argument list and a return type. These two things together define the function signature. So I am waiting for a function, and I don't know what it, what what's the functionality of that function is. What does it do? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for a function that will take that can take two integer and that will return an integer. And I I, I have no clue what 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 the contents of it would be. Mm -hmm. I have no clue. So <clears throat> so now I can, for example, I can pass. I can call this multiply some numbers. Yes. I can pass my function actually to, and as you can see, it will accept it because my the signature of this function, this lambda, is taking two integers and returning an integer. And here, for example, let me pass two other num integers: number one, int, and number two, int. And let's say that I'm an, unable of multiplying two numbers, for example, three and six, like this. And I have to call a function, and that. yes, and pass my my multiplier that do, that, that actually does multiplying, and I'm passing that, delegating that to the other function. I'm saying multiply some numbers. This is the function that will be, this is the multiplier, and please multiply four and five for me, and please return it to me. So I want to print this. This function should use this this function and should pass these two to that and return the returning type. Yes? It should it should call the multiplier. It should pass number one and number two. And then it should return. So the multiplier returns an integer and we are not returning anything. Uh -huh. Yes? Mm -hmm. We should return an integer. integer. And now if I run. you'll see that it is 20. So the functions are used for a lot of purposes, a lot of, you know, they are, they are very handy. 
Uh, for example, when we want to filter a list, we can pass a lambda, a function. Mm -hmm. a function, and we say, for example, please feed all of the items inside that list to this lambda that, I, that I'm giving to you. And I will say, I will say to you, I will return that if I want this item or not, and then collect all those items and then return a new list. So now I want to put this thing that we just learned into test. I want to write a function that filters a list. So we have a function, say we have fun filter. Mm -hmm. This function will re receive a list, a list of, for example, list of, for example, a string. Yes. And it will pass that, it will pass all those strings to this function that you are given. Mm -hmm. And inside that function that you have passed to that, to this, to this filter, you should say whether you want this item or not. For example, you pass a list of app, mm, product names to this. It is apple, orange, peach, banana. And you pass another, you pass another function, lambda, that uh, you say that, okay, the filter function, please feed them one by one to me. For example, first call me and pass me Apple mm -hmm. and ask me whether or I want it or not. Mm -hmm. And if I say true, please put it aside for me and store it. Mm -hmm. Then feed the next one and go on to the last item. Okay, okay. And after storing all of the things that I said I want them, I return true. Please, then, okay. then at the end, return the list that you created, the new list that are, that are filtered from the first list. Mm -hmm. So for filtering, what the signature would be? What, what is the signature, proper signature for filtering? We will pass the string to it and we will ask whether you want it or not. So the filtering mechanism, say, or whatever. Filtering mechanism is a function, yes? that mm -hmm. takes something and receive and returns something. something. So what, what does it take? What does it, it receive? It takes a list of strings. A list of string? No. This function should receive a single string. We, this ah, to check. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the, uh, you know, responsibility. The first one list check, takes the list, list of string and the next one um, will evaluate them, yes? To check them it's true or not. Do we want it or not? Yes. So the function should return it's Boolean. Boolean. So true it should return a Boolean. Yes. Okay. So here in filter, we have to, for example, here we have to use one of the for loops or do while structure mm -hmm. loops, uh, the standard loops inside the language. We say for all string str, for example, in this list. Yes. Yes. Please first, please call this function, pass the str to that. Mm -hmm. And after you passed it, if it was it true. will save in the result mm -hmm. whether they it's want they want this or not and after that have please have a val filtered for example list which is a mutable list of string yes this is empty at the beginning so when the user returns a result mm -hmm. and say that if when the result is true it means that the caller of this function want this string in the result, wants the string to be filtered and to be available in the result, yes? yes? So we store it where? In the filtered list, yes? I know that this is complicated. It, it is the first time, actually, yes, that, you, that you are seeing this. So, mm -hmm. and at the end, after iterating all of the strings in the list and passing them one by one to this and asking this, to whether you want it or not. And after storing all of the things that this told us that it wants, then we return the filtered list, yes? We return the list that we filtered by the aid of this function. So now, let's say we have, let me just remove these and comment this. Let's say we have this list, my list. It is a list of, for example, say strings, apple, yes, and orange. I'm 
constructing a list of product names. Mm -hmm. Peach, for example, or watermelon. banana, watermelon. <laughs> Like this? Yes. Okay. So now let's say I want all of the uh, I want all of the products mm -hmm. that are, for example, that start with B. Yes mm -hmm. or no? No. I, I want something. For example, you should have two two, two Bs or two Cs or. For example, onion. We can write onion here. Onion, yes. As we have already. Fruit, of course, onion. <laughs> so I want. Let's say I want. Uh, I have a lot of uh, product products, like product items, names uh -huh. in this list, and I don't know them. Maybe it is a hundred or thousand products, and I want all of the products that start with O. Mm -hmm. Okay, for that, I have to write a for each loop. Yes. Yes. And I say, for example, P in, in the list in my list. Mm -hmm. And I say if this P dot, for example, the first letter of P, if the first letter of P string equals well, to O, o then, then we should call filter. Huh? Then no, 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 not not calling filter. Then I, I'm not using this filter yet. I'm not using this yet. Then, for example, print it or store it or, or something like that. But writing this for loop, this for structure every time is is very ugly, mm -hmm. and it it is. It is type of they say imperative programming. It is not declarative. It is imperative. For example, it means that being imperative means <clears throat> that it does not talk like human language. You know, mm -hmm. you should you be familiar with these structures to interpret what what it is actually doing. So, so let's say we have a filter function, filter, yes. And we can pass our list to, to, the, to that filter function, and we can pass we can pass a lambda that takes a string. I say, for example, I name this product string, and this function should return true or false whether I want that I want this product to be included in the result or not. Mm -hmm. So I say if product that you pass to me the first letter of the product is equals to O, then yes. Then then please return true. true. Else false. please return false. So so I, I could actually write uh, Maybe easily but, without the if if else statement. Yes? Yes, yes, it doesn't need that. We don't need this if else statement here. Mm -hmm. So did this this two equal signs this two equal signs here just in, indicate it returns a true or false whether and I want this my filter function work like that so now this filter function will receive this list and will receive this function it's another function and understand this and will pass order. all of the items inside it to that and will create and construct a new list filtered with all of the products that start with oh let's let's just test that filter list and let's print the filtered list. Filtered list. Let's run the application. <coughs> and it's returning orange and onion. Yes? A new list. It is actually a new list. So so I've passed my list with a function that has a logic that I've written that will be, that will help the filter function to filter all of the items that I'd like. So one thing, one, another thing that I, I want to share here is that if the if a lambda, if a function here, uh -huh. is the last argument of the function, so this this this, this uh -huh. filtering mechanism yes. is the last thing that filter will receive. Yes, mm -hmm. you could actually go ahead and and when you call this function, whenever you call, call this function, you can put your lambda outside of the parentheses. You can write like this. You can say filter last my point. list, mm -hmm. and you are passing also this this function. Yes, mm -hmm. you are also passing this lambda as the second. But you can the Kotlin lets you to allows you to pass uh, the, write this function outside of the parentheses. So, so why? 
Why do you think that it allows us to? So what's the use in writing this lambda outside of this? <laughs> the only thing that comes <laughs> Why? to my mind is to make it beautiful. <laughs> yes, just for making really? beautiful. Yes, just for that. No, I thought and that's not, not, not just not just go ahead and read this line. The most silly answer. Please filter my list mm -hmm. like this. Uh -huh. Yes, please filter my list like this. Mm -hmm. And and inside a lambda, if if our lambda only receives a single a single argument, you can actually remove that and you access that with the it you have it wow it yes amazing you say please filter my list if it the zero the oh, first the first character of it is uh -huh. oh please filter my list like that so for writing this you have to every time write a for loop a do while loop have an index increment that index create a new list and do if and Yes? Yes. But but you write it once like this. You write a function like this and you call it whenever you want, you like, like this. Very beautiful. <laughs> this is the filter function. Now, for example, say we, we want to have a for each loop. For writing a for each loop means that we have, when, when we write the for. We have to filter the list again. No, 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 no. This time, no. When we write a for loop, we uh, we are iterating over something, yes? We are iterating over, for example, on, on a list. And we are passing a body that we be, will be called each time and that will be passed, that will be passed by, that, and this for loop will pass the item at each iteration to this lambda. Yes, it's actually lambda, as you can see. This is a lambda. So I can, for example, have a function named for each that will do the job of loop for me. And I won't need any for each loop. For example, say this this for each loop takes a list of a string, and it takes a for example uh, body. Yes, I name it the body. So the body will receive this string, and I don't want it to return anything. I, I write a unit. This is the equivalent of void in Java. Mm -hmm. I say, so you want to iterate over this list. Yes, mm -hmm. and so you should give me a body that I, I will pass all of the items inside the list to that. Now, like, like this bottom one, I can say for a string in list, yes? I write this for, and I say call body and pass that string. It's, it, it, is, it is two lines of code, but, 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 now, use it times. now, now, yes. Now, say I want to print ln all of these apple, all of these products. Yes, for for iterating over them, I can say for, for each. each my list. Yes, and the last argument that it is taking is a lambda. I can write this lambda outside, and say this each. it. Yes, print ln it. It's very beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Let me run the application. Load this kind home. It will print apple, orange, peach. So it is it is executing this lambda for every item inside the list. We will use we will write like these functions a lot. We will use them a lot. And actually, if you want the truth, that they, they are already written for us. You know, we have for example, I have on the list we have my list dot filter. for each uh -huh. or filter or map or other functions but i want you guys to first see the that we can write implementation of them yes that we can write them ourselves and then we will use the actual ones that the kotlin has written so for now we have almost completed the functionality of the application so where, where is the main menu i don't see the menu. it's down no 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 it's fine Oh, on the menu. Yes, the menu. Printing the, yeah, th there it is. It's the menu. We can change the shop name. We can create product, create customer, create shopping cart. Let's just ignore these modifiers for the moment. We can create, print product list, print customer list, print the shopping carts mm -hmm. for each customer. And the code is ugly. Still, it is ugly. It has, it, it needs a lot of refactoring. It has these dead wrong global variables at the top they should not be at the top 
So it is it is very wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, so it needs refactoring, but it is almost, you know, I think we are in the verge of, you know, completing the first phase. The first phase is completing, almost completing. Uh, we will continue from here. We will, I think, start the second phase. And we'll see what we learn in the second phase. So I want to thank you all guys for watching and following us. Thank you very much. Don't forget to practice. Yes. You should practice a lot. We will have a lot of fun things that we want to share with you guys. If not, you will lose the clue. Yes. So bye. bye.